the, the one thing I know is he has this tremendous love for people, for people he worked with, people in the story, people in the audience. I, I think Frank's a classic example of the motion picture director. But you know, I, I, can't, I can't help feeling that for all the great pictures he's made, the best Frank Capra story is the story of his own life. It's got more highs and lows than a roller coaster. It's, a, it's heartwarming. It's kind of hard to believe, really. And it could only happen in America. Francesco Capra was born in Bisaquino, Sicily. He was six years old in 1903 when his family crossed the ocean with little more than a dream to call their own. They arrived at Ellis Island, the gateway to America. Immigrants thought the streets of America would be paved with gold, but at the end of the train ride to Los Angeles, the cappers found that Sunset Boulevard wasn't paved at all. Sarah and Salvatore Capra could not read or write. A shepherd in the old country, Salvatore picked fruit in California. He wanted something better for his son, so he took Frank to school. Life in little Sicily was hard. The whole family had to work. I hated the ghetto, Frank said later. Hated being poor. I was looking for a way out. Education became his obsession. At Caltech, he worked 20 hours a day studying and waiting tables. And in 1918, the boy whose parents could not read or write won a degree in chemical engineering. Frank Capra was on his way. In the First World War, Frank enlisted, but in less than a year, he was just another unemployed veteran. In San Francisco, a movie company advertised for a director for a short film. I'm from Hollywood, he said. He got the job. Then he went to Hollywood. At the Max Senate studio, he was hired as a gag man. It was the golden age of comedy, and Frank learned to make people laugh without saying a word. In 1926, a comedian named Harry Langdon gave his gag man a chance to direct. The film was The Strong Man, and with it, a great American director was born. <laughs> 